TMNT Universe is meant for adult collectors and Ninja Turtles fans. Welcome to TMNT Universe, I'm Uter Max. Today I got my hands on Wave 2 of the Turtles in Time figures from NECA Toys. These things are awesome, so put your quarters in the arcade machine and let's go! How's it going? I finally got my hands on Wave 2 of the Turtles in Time figures and I am itching to get these guys open. For the time being this will finish out the Turtles in Time figures from NECA Toys with the exception of the Loot Crate Shocked Turtle that hopefully we'll get in the near future. We have no news on what Wave 3 will be, but we did get a look at a work in progress Turtles in Time Baxter Stockman during NECA Toys San Diego Comic Con Twitter drops. But enough about Wave 3, let's finish off Wave 2 and get these guys open. And here we go! For Wave 2, we have Michelangelo, Raphael, Leatherhead, and Shredder. Let's get into them! Let's start this off with Michelangelo. This is basically the same packaging that the other two turtles had, Leonardo and Donatello, from Wave 1. It has basically the same pictures on the side, but here on the back, since this is Wave 2, we have Raphael, Shredder, and Leatherhead. And this great posed picture of Michelangelo. Let's tear this box open and take a closer look. And here is the unboxed Michelangelo. You can see that he has the pixelated paint that both Leonardo and Donatello had, as well as the original arcade release of the figures. He also has this very dark shading on the backs of his arms and legs. As with all the other releases, this is the same body. He has the same articulation, but these joints are a little stiff, so as with any NECA figure, you want to use hot water or a hairdryer when posing him because you don't want to break any of his joints. Personally, I prefer for the joints to be too tight than too loose. At least when they're tight, they'll hold a pose. I have a lot of gremlins with loose joints I can't get to stand up for anything. But let's take a look at Mikey's accessories. First off, we have a pair of nunchucks with real chain. I love it when his nunchucks come with real chain because it lets you do this. But if you want to save yourself some carpal tunnel syndrome, you could really just use this attachment that'll stick right onto the end of the nunchucks with this little socket here. It gives you that same whirling effect. Mikey also comes with an extra set of hands, one pointing hand and one thumbs up hand. Now my thumbs up has an irregularity with a little piece of black plastic embedded in the hand. I'm assuming this happened in the casting process, but I have a ton of these hands so it's not that big of a deal and it's bound to happen sooner or later. And in this line of figures, it's really my first QC issue. And for my favorite accessory in these figures is the sewer surfboard. I was hoping that Raf and Mikey would come with the future hoverboard instead of these, splitting it two and two between the turtles, but this is what we got. And I love that it has that more yellowish orange, just like Mikey's mask, and the same color from the video game. And he comes with this clear stand, you just plug it right into there, and then you can articulate it and pose the figure right on top. Now let's finish out the last turtle from this set. My toes, my toes. And here we have Raphael. In the same packaging as Michelangelo, we have the figure in there held in with a little twisty band. We also have a pair of size. And on the back we have another pose picture of Raphael and another cross cell with the other figures. It also says down here on the bottom that it comes with a pair of size and a hoverboard display stand. So let's check him out. And here's the turtle with attitude, Raphael. Now this is again the same figure, same articulation, same paint as the other ones, but I noticed for the first time today that he has a different bandana. This one's at least twice as long as the Toon Turtle, so it's a small difference, but it's still cool in its own right. This is your standard NECA TMNT figure, tight joints and everything. In fact, his joints are a little tighter than Michelangelo's, so I don't want to pose him yet for fear of breaking them. And outside of a different sneer, it's basically the same figure. But one of the differences is accessories, so let's take a look at those. And of course, he comes with a pair of size. Now, these seem a little sharper than some of the other ones on the edge. I'm not sure I'll have to go back and look, but I also like this two-tone paint along the handle. 
He also comes with the same set of hands, but opposite. A left thumbs up and a right pointing hand. And he comes with his hoverboard. And just like the others, you just plug this in and you get a fully posable display stand. Now I'm going to repeat that I wish they had come with the futuristic hoverboards, but they didn't. So here's hoping we maybe get an accessory pack or at least a couple of foot soldiers with those future hoverboards. Now let's travel back to the Old West for our next figure. And this is the one I've been really wanting to get to, Leatherhead, one of my favorite characters of all time, and I'm super excited to be able to open this ahead of the cartoon figure, which hopefully I won't have to wait too much longer for. And flipping over to the back, we get this video game style picture of Leatherhead and the other figures on a cross cell. This guy is super awesome, so let's get him out of this box. And here he is. This guy is massive. He's a really weighty piece of plastic. I remember the first time I saw him, I think it was at Toy Fair, might have been Comic Con when they had him on display, and just how excited I was to get him even back then. Now Leatherhead comes out of the package without his tail attached, and it's a little difficult to get onto that little barbell, but with a little bit of hot water, it goes right on. His tail is on a barbell joint, so he has a little bit of articulation there. Some up, some down, left, right. There's not a lot, but you can get some movement out of it. But he never really moved it a whole lot in the cartoon either. Moving on to some of the other articulation. He has some head articulation. I mean, he can look down this far, he can look up this far. Uh, maybe a little bit of right and left, but really this part of the sculpture kind of hinders some of the posing. But more importantly than head articulation, Leatherhead has an articulated jaw, which to me is more important for this character. It can open, it can close. The back of the neck or the throat keeps it from opening too far, but you can get him into some poses directly out of the video game. He also has the socket and swivel shoulder, a bicep swivel, a double hinged elbow, a lot of the same articulation that most NECA figures have. Now mine has some loose ankles, which isn't surprising considering they're the same parts from Rocksteady and he also had loose ankles. In another reuse of parts, he has the same hands as Bebop and Rocksteady, but a different color and they work here. So let's check out his other hands. He comes with what looks like a trigger finger hand and a gripping hand. And just like Rocksteady and Bebop, he also has two open palm reaching hands. And really, his only accessory is this pixelated knife, which was his only weapon in the video game as well. So if your shell hasn't been buried and wounded knee, we're going to move on to the last figure in Wave 2. My favorite. And last up is Shredder. It's a little hard to see his face because the cape is flipped up on mine but here he is in all his glory. Now, this was from the arcade version of the game, not the Super Nintendo version that had Super Shredder from the Secret of the Ooze. And again, we have another picture here posed of him in front of the Statue of Liberty and the other characters on the cross cell. Let's take a look at him. Here he is in his pixelated paint and his brightly colored cape. This figure has a lot of sculptural differences from other Shredders, like the front of his helmet seems to be a new piece. He also has these larger, spikier shoulder pads. In fact, most of his armor seems to be a new piece. The blades on his arm piece are a little longer and made of a softer rubber, and the back of it goes all the way up into his upper arm. Same thing for the knee, and he also has these metal foot cuffs. All these additions are made of a flexible rubber. In fact, the entire figure has a sort of soft, rubbery feel to the plastic. He's built on the same shredder body that we've seen before, so he has the same articulation. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. The head is on a ball socket and actually has a lot of posability to it. I have a problem with this piece. I gotta figure out something to keep it down. But this shredder is a nice addition to the set. The rubbery armor does feel a little strange. Um, in fact, it carries over into his back. This entire chest piece feels like it's covered in a sheet of rubber. I love the pixelated paint and how NECA can do a new paint deco and make a new figure. But this thing is going to drive me nuts. Maybe future shredders will get a plastic collar underneath that this gets glued to. Let's take a look at his accessories. Like this lightsaber with some green energy paint on the blade and a two-tone paint on the hilt. Right out of the arcade game. We've also got this hand blast energy effect that has this sort of pixelated sculpt to it that really brings out the detail. 
There's also these two little arm cuffs so that it'll clip onto his forearm. And lastly is this energy fire effect that one of his hands actually clips right into. So if you socket that in there, he'll be able to hold this fire on the end of his hand. Speaking of hands, let's take a look at some of those. He has two of what I like to call ninja pose hands. They look like something out of an old martial arts movie. But he also comes with a set of gripping hands. And that about does it for Shredder. These guys make a great addition to my collection, and I'm super excited to see what they have for us in Wave 3. Maybe we'll finally get that video game style General Trag and Lieutenant Granitor. Since most of the figures in this wave have been repaints or redecos of old figures, I'm also expecting to see Token Razar show up, maybe even Pirate Bebop and Rocksteady. I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you for watching, and if you enjoy the content that I make, please subscribe. It helps me get my content out to more people and grow our community, which is really the reason I do this. But that's all I have for today, so later dudes! The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, our four reptilian heroes, have overcome the arc villain Shredder. Hey guys, if you liked the video, don't forget to kick that like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I upload every Turtle Tuesday, so you can always come back to see what's new. You can also check me out on various social media, links in the description. And as always, for all things Turtles, check TMNT Universe. <laughs>